Okay, good afternoon to all the SCAN members and friends this afternoon. Thank you very much for joining in on our monthly survival sharing series. Today, we have the lovely Dr. Daphne Stephen, who will be covering the topic of this month's sharing uh, regarding surgical management of lymphedema. Uh, let me give you a brief background of Dr. Daphne. Okay, Dr. Daphne is received her undergraduate training from University of Malaysia, Sarawak in 2006 and master's in plastic surgery from University of Science Malaysia in 2015. She is currently working as a plastic and reconstructive surgeon in Sarawak General Hospital since July 2015. Her practices span entire spectrum of plastic surgery with significance to burn surgery, cleft surgery, breast reconstruction, head and neck oncology reconstruction, hand trauma, general reconstruction, and lower limb reconstruction. She has also performed cleft surgery and ABF creation uh, during her visiting plastic surgery to other districts, hospitals in Sarawak. Her future plan is to further Train, train her own subspecialty, which is uh, super micro surgery, example, lymphatic surgery. Okay, and hope to further expand this service into SGH and eventually the whole state. Now, before I pass over the time to Miss Daphne, um, we would like everyone to mute ourselves during the presentation for any questions. Uh, we can either present it at the end of the presentation or type in into the chat box. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Daphne to further educate us regarding surgical management of lymphedema. Okay. Dr. Daphne, over to you. Okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for spending this Saturday afternoon with me. Can you hear my voice clearly? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Can you see the slide that I'm sharing? Or is it in? Yes, can be seen. Yeah, okay. Right. So yeah. good afternoon, everyone. So this one will be, I guess I'm uh, going to briefly about what's the treatment for, especially in single treatment of it. question was to the plan education towards the end. So there's no uh, conflicts of interest to declare. So before we go further detail on lymphedema itself, so what is lymph? Before that, just a, some brief introduction. Lymph or lymphatics actually is the one, it's, it's like a very thin wall structure. As you can see here, it's circulate all over the body and it's actually also accompany your blood vessel. And all this lymph will flow in one direction towards the heart. So how does the lymph look like? Why is it so important, especially like in, in post uh, mastectomy patient, uh, especially after they did the uh, axillary uh, dissection? So lymph actually contain mainly a uh, protein and some of it actually white blood cells. And the purpose of this actually, they're going to distribute this, collect this from all tissue all over the body and carry out to your heart and also to your deliver. So in general, this how does the lymph look like? As you can see, lymph node, you have artery and you have blood vessel over there as well. So what's the main function? As I mentioned earlier, mainly you want to fluid balance. You have excess fluid in the body. You want to prevent any water clogging. Number two, you have to absorb, transfer the fat from your intestine guide and transport to the liver. And also the main function of lymphatic system itself is actually to filter bacteria, foreign materials, and also it produces all your lymphocyte and antibody to fight the bacteria. That's why it is important lymphatic system in our body itself. So overall, what's the incident lymphedema? In my presentation, I'm going to talk mainly about lymphedema in, post, in breast cancer patients. I'm not going to talk about the lower limb lymphedema. So overall, this is about one in six patients treatment treated for breast cancer will develop lymphedema later on. It doesn't mean that immediately it can be happen like months or years later. And it's actually a very progressive disease and can be lasted for so many years. So overall, what's the incident of breast cancer in our country? 
So this actually just a latest, uh, it's not really latest journal or latest data that can I get. It's actually from 2014 from our Malaysian journal itself. So National Cancer Registry reported that the average age of patient that got breast cancer around 47 years old and incidence is highest in Chinese, Indians, followed by Malay. And overall, they didn't mention in this study why it's highest in Chinese or why it's lowest in Malay, but technically some of the local like data that have been collected among the local hospital district, because the Chinese actually mainly, they are very concerned about their own health and they always do their own physical examination. So what is lymphedema? Lymphedema happen actually when this, after your mastectomy operation, your removal of your axillary lymph node of your axilla. So what happened this blockage of the system? So what happened? The lymphatic cannot go anywhere. The lymph fluid cannot go anywhere. So what happened? You accumulate inside your tissue. So if it's accumulated tissue, by progressively, it will become hardened. So how does the patient lymphedema look like? So it will be like the concern area, actually only the affected site, actually only the one that have a mastectomy before. It doesn't matter like immediately like the contralateral breast, only the breast that have been operated before. And from the study itself, they said that, especially if the patient have a axillary limb node dissection before, and also there's history of radiation because radiation mainly is not only towards the breast, radiation also given to the axilla itself. So overall, this term as breast cancer related lymphedema is stand alone as a, so as a study going on, they stand alone as breast cancer related lymphedema, which treatment can be different from a other type of lymphedema. So from why is it important lymphedema? Because patients will complain of discomfort. There'll be, difficulty in doing their active, activity daily life, and there's a disfigure, disfigurement, and there's a risk of recurrent infection. And overall, this actually just a guideline, like Macham elects the one that predisposing factor that can lead to lymph edema itself and cannot be completely cured. So how do you want to stage in lymph edema? I'm just going briefly through. So. Initially, stage zero, you cannot identify anything because the limb actually looks equal. But then by stage one, there'll be slightly early accumulation and patient will complain slightly swelling, but it will relieve by a limb elevation. Type three, uh, type two will be slightly also swollen. There'll be some fitting, but it can be resolved. But type four, type three is the one that very severe uh, swelling and usually resolve if it's done by surgical management. So what happened in lymphedema? So here is our normal lymphatic tissue. As you can see here, the lymph will flow normally in our, in our body through your limb. So what happened if there's a lymph node removal over here, the next diagram, the lymphatic flow from your limb will be reduced and it will go towards your surrounding tissue. That's why I explain why it's become swollen. Another issue actually there's be decreased flow. So how does the patient presenting? They'll be feeling of tightness over the arm, over the chest or the armpit. There'll be complaint of skin changes or thickening. There'll be arm weakness. There'll be very swollen limb compared, dengan, uh, compared with the normal side. And patient will complain of your shoulder wrist or joint stiffness, this one because of the edema, edematous. So what's the possible complication from lymph edema? Okay, apart from interfere with activity daily living, there'll be risk of recurrent skin infection, especially if it's untreated or if actually it's a poor hygiene. Then also there's a risk of skin cancer, skin changes to malignancy as well, which actually can be lead to increase further mobility to your daily living. Then further, the psychological effect, for example, depression, anxiety, and also negative body image. So clinically, how do you see for us in order for us to diagnose lymphedema? So during your regular follow-up, what we're going to do if you have a complaint of heaviness over your affected limb, then we have to do a clinical measurement, which is we just use, using a measuring tap 
measure it and after that we follow you up and see is there any progressive increase in swelling and before we go further to surgical usually we try to go for conservative management so this just like guideline i mean management in leaf edema actually overall what we need supposed to do what we need like further uh, investigation we need to be done it's not like immediately when you come to us we presented with lymph edema, then we immediately offer for operation. We have to investigate first what's the cause. Is it possible because of the blockage of your lymphatic system? Or is it possible because of your removal of the lymph node? Or is it because of just simple complication because of the scar itself from the previous operation involved your axilla? So what's the treatment like in lymph edema? You have the conservative and surgical management. So what do we offer usually most of the time if we see a patient with lymph edema? We offer conservative management first because surgical doesn't mean that you have a good outcome as well. Unless they come earlier to us, then the outcome will be good. So from the guideline outside there, like all over the world, so many actually advise that Conservative management will be the first treatment first for all the patients with the lymphedema. So lymphedema, if I see a patient with lymphedema, what I'm going to do, I will refer to physiotherapy because they have a physiotherapist that can do a massage. They can do a combined um, lymphatic massage as well with your uh, bandage. And after that, but the thing is, patient always complain of difficulty in using the bandage as well because it's going to cause discomfort as well but actually by time they proved that conservative management actually can reduce your incident of lymph edema but this conservative management only for early stage of lymph edema but what happened if it's in severe stage so in severe stage again we have to decide whether is it necessary for us to go in for surgical operation so the main topic actually when I was approached actually mainly talking about lymphedema surgery. So far overall in our own Malaysia, actually, we haven't done a lot of lymph lymphedema surgery itself. Because probably because of lack of education, one or number two, because patient actually not aware there's such thing like this kind of surgery is actually offered in the hospital. So far as I'm training from like from my USM training of throughout my career, there's few patients actually concerned about the lymphedema. But the moment we mentioned that we need to do operation, actually patients start to like getting scared. They're not keen to go another operation. And I understand that because there's no way like you guys going in again to do another operation, which is the successful rate probably low and depend on the investigation, investigation finding. So in general, like lymphedema surgery can be divided like lymphedema surgery itself, which is I'm going to talk further detail after this, in which is actually can improve your lymphatic drainage or remove your excess fatty tissue. Or another option is actually, uh, actually it's not common, but liposuction also can use in lymphedema surgery. But liposuction, so far the operation is mainly for lymphedema in lower limb. For upper limb, usually the possibility of doing liposuction is less compared with the other patient. So this is what I'm going, why I mentioned about the staging of your lymph edema earlier. You have, which is I mentioned earlier, you have stage zero, one, two, and three. So if if you can see here, many treatment uh, algorithm they prefer for is stage zero, stage one, and stage two. Each potential candidate for reconstructive surgery for all the one that we're going to offer so before that all patients have to do an investigation first because we need to confirm whether the patient lymphatic vessel or system inside the body is still present if it's like still healthy the remaining one then you're we're going to recommend the lymphatic surgery itself which we can either we take a lymph node transfer meaning that i have to take some tissue from your other part of the body transfer to the axilla or I have to do a bypass surgery, meaning that I have to anastomose, connect your blood vessel to the lymphatic surgery. So overall, lymphedema surgery, like I say, is only an early stage lymphedema, and you have to be seen both with the breast 
surgeon and also the plastic surgeon as well. And we have to investigate you before we decide which operation actually fit for your condition. So there's two options. You have lymph node transplant and also lymphovenous uh, bypass. So what is lymph node transplant? So as you can see that, as I mentioned earlier, the diagram, we have all the lymph node all over the body. But there's a certain part of your body in which we can harvest the lymph node with the fat tissue. And we transfer this towards the axilla, meaning that we have to introduce another new tissue towards the affected area. So for example, like in this diagram, we took the skin and also the fat tissue as well as the lymph node plus the blood vessel as well. Because in order for this tissue to survive, we have to connect it with the blood vessel. And anastomosis means that connect with the axillary vessel again, which is all these operations need to be done under microscope. And it's going to be like not very long surgery. It's probably around, take about three to four hours in order for us to search like which is the recipient vessel when we do the anastomosis. So where we can take the tissue? As you can see, we can take it anywhere. For example, most common area is a groin flap, which we can combine, which I am going to show you later on the letter slide. It can be combined with your uh, groin, uh, with your abdominal flap, or we can take some of the lymph node with fat and skin over your the neck region, submental, and also all over the body, depend on the preference of the surgeon and also the patient. Because in the end of the day, actually, we have to get consent from you and which part of the body that you prefer us to take the tissue. Because that means you have two sides of the operation, which is probably for some patients is not comfortable and then not really keen because of the of, because of the pen and you have two sides of the surgery. So after all the explanation, I'm just going to give you some examples. So like what's the main issue in patient with upper uh, extremity lymphedema? There'll be axillary scar because they previously there's an operation over the axilla and also there's radiation. So these two actually is the most common cause of your lymphedema. It doesn't mean that when I mention about it, it's because of radiation, you're not going, this patient not going to go undergo radiation because there's a risk there, but it's not a like contraindication and there's a risk factor for lymphedema. So just going to show a photo, I think easier when we show the photo instead of explaining in the, some, uh, in the words. So this patient actually post mastectomy was done. This one is actually not my patient. It was taken from a journal uh, from Takumi, Prof Takumi, which is in Japan. So this patient actually uh, presented a post mastectomy, which is done like two years on with history of radiation before. As you can see here, patient presented to them and keen for another breast reconstruction. So this is how does she look like before up. If you can see, it's actually around stage one or stage two, the limb is slightly swollen. So what they do actually immediately, they took some abdominal flap over here and with the fat and also leaf knot itself and transfer over the affected area, which is towards the breast and the anastomose, the remaining lymph knot towards the axilla vein. So the outcome, this patient post-op was seen like three months later, it shows slightly improved. Doesn't mean that after this operation, the patient will, the lymphedema will be no more because there's a possibility of risk, the uh, scar will be happening again over your axilla. So this is like a better diagram of showing how does the fat tissue contain earlier on. So as you can see, when it transfer the flap from your lower abdomen over here, Okay, you're taking it with some fat tissue as well. Sorry. And this lymph node, we harvest with the skin flap. We're going to transplant, put over the axilla itself and anastomose back in order to restore back the lymphatic channel earlier on. So it can be done during one setting, like for example, the next stage of the post mastectomy. Doesn't mean that it must be immediately during the first operation. It can be done like for the second stage during mastectomy, we harvest with abdominal flap. The, this how does it, uh, sorry, diagram looks like. You take some, I mean, fat tissue with skin and the blood vessel and transfer this one over towards the axilla. So this, how does the scar look like? It will be going to be like one linear scar. So another one 
option actually if you some patient they don't want to do like breast they don't want to interfere with the lymph node or probably the scar very bad over the axilla we can transplant it anywhere part of the affected limb for example it can be transplanted over your uh, wrist joint as well but in order for that we have to search for the viable or normal lymphatic vessel first which we need to investigate so as you can see we have we have the skin flap with the lymph node with the fat itself, then we sambong, I mean, we connect with the blood vessel of the dead. So it's going to be like large chunk of tissue over your wrist area. So when people ask us how, how small is it in the channel, because technically, actually, you cannot see with your bare eyes. So we have to do the operation under a microscope. As you can see here, it's a show diagram. It's around 0.7 mm. So it's quite small. So that's why we have, before we do this, we have to do investigation first. We have to give some injection first to find which vessel is it, which part of it draining. Then after this, it's going to be anastomosis with your remaining vessel in which we have to see under microscope. All this operation needs to be done under microscope. It cannot be done under bare eyes. So the outcome actually from the similar study uh, from the limb node transplant, uh, they said it can be there's a, uh, the upper limb perimeter will return normal, like in this case, like normal in up to 10 cases, there'll be decreased more than 50% of value in out of six patients. Actually, the outcome from the study, it can be done, but it will take a long time and patient have to be, have a strict regimen after the operation itself. So just now we're talking about the lymph node transplant, meaning that we have, uh, we took some large chunk of the fat with the skin with the lymph node and we transfer it towards axilla. That's another operation. Okay, another option actually you do a this is another LVA or we call this LVA lymphatico venular anastomosis, meaning that I connect with the lymphatic vessel, the normal one, the remaining lymphatic with the remaining vessel over the lip affected lip. Technically, this operation only if there's a healthy lymphatic vessel. Meaning that it's, there's no scar over there, it's very healthy and can be done towards the end of the surgery. So as you can see here, ideal candidate only during the early stage. And the aim of this operation only to bypass the obstructed lymphatic vessel. Remember, in patient with post mastectomy, when they remove all the axillary clearance with the lymph node, the, there's obstruction over there. So when there's obstruction, we need to do another operation to bypass the affected site. So it can be done, not only over the axilla, it can be done over the operation over the forearm itself. So, that's about two main general, uh, the lymphedema surgery that usually offer during the early stage. Uh, I didn't take a lot of, to put a lot of photo because it's very difficult to expand until, actually I want to upload the video, but it's difficult to upload some video because of the copyright, everything. So, but I think if you guys want to further detail, I can share some of the general of a photo of a patient. So how about the liposuction, the last option in which this one only for the, stage four or the like stage three of the lymphedema. It's very bad lymphedema. And usually this one applied only for the lower limb. So for the upper limb, it can be resolved mainly by management, a conservative management, or it can be done by the lymph node transplant. But liposuction usually can be done only, uh, most common actually in lower limb is lymphedema because patient presented quite bad. And this only for, if it's, you don't have a normal lymphatic channel. Meaning that all the lymphatic channel just now, the earlier on that I show, all is damaged, is uh, is obstructed everywhere. So liposuction is an option. So what happened actually all because why liposuction is not recommended in the early stage? Because in stage zero or stage one, you have a normal lymphatic channel. So if I do a liposuction on the normal patient with lymphatic channel, it's going to further damage the lymphatic vessel and can be worsening of your lymphatic or lymphedema. 
But if it's like later stage, meaning that all your lymphatic channel is damaged, uh, rosa or everything is like damaged, liposuction is an op option option because you have to, you can remove all the scar tissue and also all the hypertrophic fat. But then again, this patient with liposuction doesn't mean that you can settle the problem immediately because you have to use the continuously pressure garment. So after everything all said and done, does it they mean that it's going to be settled because you have to do a some uh, treatment regime at post-operative care as well. So after immediately after surgery, we have to refer you to physiotherapy as well for a manual drainage, meaning that you encourage the drainage of the lymphatic channel. Patient, uh, the physiotherapists have to do a massage and daily during the first few months. So that means you have to come to clinic every every day or probably depend on the appointment with your physiotherapist that can perform the manual drainage for you to take until at least for three months. Then it can be performed like following three months then after discontinuity. But patient have to continue using a pressure garment and you have to avoid the compression over the transplant, uh, the, over the lymph node that we transfer. I think that's all for the lymphedema. This is some of my uh, lymph, uh, my reference. I'm not sure because the thing is, I'm not sure how much can I present or inform during the lymphedema surgery. I know it's difficult to ask. I, I mean, difficult to understand because it's quite new and it's not really commonly done at the moment. But it's quite common in other parts of our country, for example, in Singapore and also Japan, Korea, because these people actually, they really treat and prevent lymphedema quite early stage of the breast cancer, which means that when patients come with mastectomy, they can do immediate re reconstruction lymphatic vessel. But then again, when they undergo an, uh, undergo axillary dissection and also radiotherapy, again, there's a risk of lymphedema, but then again, you have to do um, manual drainage, which is you have to refer early to physiotherapy. If there's any complaint that you notice that limbs actually slightly larger compared with the normal side, alert your surgeon during the follow-up so that we can identify early instead of like it getting worse. Everything. Okay, I think that's all. Uh, I know it's, I'm trying to simplify it because I'm not sure how much should I talk about this because it's not really common at the moment, but we try to do it more once we have some patient to do the lymphedema surgery. So. Okay, I think any question for, for now? Does anyone have any questions for Dr. Daphne? Dr. Daphne, can I ask a question? How often is this yeah. procedure done in uh, Sarawak General Hospital itself? Is it, you know, uh, aware, you know, do breast cancer patients, are they aware of this surgery? Actually, honestly, it's only when there's one Miss Adiba just come, come back. She's a breast uh, surgeon. Just come back from uh, her training, subspecial training. So I think she's the one that introduced some of the patient to us that this lymphedema surgery can be offered. But problem is when the patient will explain to them that they need to undergo another operation or they need, like, we have to take some tissue from other part of the body. They're not keen. So this one, we have to, like, give a proper counsel. I think we need to give like proper education for this patient. Mm -hmm. I think they're not aware. So, but I think Miss Adipa, like our breast uh, surgeon counterpart, they're trying to introduce this. I think once we get the patient, once they, they understand the importance of this, I think we can start doing it. Like there's a lot of patients. I think we have two or three patients, but the moment we extend, like we, they need to undergo another operation. They're not really keen to undergo. And I understand because they've done like, one operation before, and you have some radiotherapy before, and actually they're not keen to go another operation. It's not quite common yet at the moment in mm -hmm. SGH, that's the thing. I think quite quite uncommon would be in coaching. Actually, this is also my first time hearing about lymphedema surgery. Um, what is the... Okay, there's a question from Unui in the chat box. Let me read it out. The question is, uh, what other types of cancer surgery a part of breast cancer will be at risk for getting lymphedema? Uh, and yeah, this one also for lymph 
Uh, if you excuse me, Dr. Daphne, can you, can you yeah. stop sharing the screen first so we can see oh. you up close? Oh. Thank you. Okay. Ah, so much better. <laughs> lymphedema, okay. Lymphedema also can happen in upper limb and also both lower limb as well. So in upper limb, most common, like apart from breast cancer, any operation that involves over the axilla, that any tumor operation done, also risk of upper limb lymphedema. How about lower limb? So lower limb, most common actually if there's a pelvic surgery, meaning that any operation over your, like risk of ovarian CA patient, because they have to do a pelvic limb node dissection, which is your some limb node over the pelvic area, also increased risk of lymphedema. So as long as it interferes all this vessel, lymphatic channel, it it is increased the risk of operation, uh, risk of the lymphedema alone. Mm -hmm. But lower limb lymphedema so far, I think from the gynae counterpart, we rarely have received referral about the complication from their side yet. But I'm not sure whether they're aware that they can refer or some patients actually not keen to go another operation, which is, I think we can improve this by uh, some like, education and so awareness to the public that, that such thing as actually can offered and can be done. Dr. Daphne, can you share what are the concerns with um, lymphedemic, lymphedema management for you okay. know, those who have just had their uh, axillary uh, limb node clearance? Hold on, uh, the conservative management. So conservative management mainly is um, is a comp like it's a combination of physiotherapy. We need help from physiotherapy. We need to refer to them as well. Can you see the the video? So you have we have to refer early to the physiotherapy. So far at the moment we have one physiotherapy in SGH alone. She actually uh, doing uh, I mean she's previously have a training doing the lymphatic massage. So we can refer to her and usually we have to like purposely noted in her referral letter that she we want her to do a massage for this patient and then need see this, uh, she need to assess the patient and decide how, how frequent does she need to do the massage. And it should be combination with the bandage as well because when patients go home, they have to do, I mean, the, uh, the from physiotherapy have to do a bandage then after a few days later on, the patient is have to come to hospital again to do the uh, massage and also re-bandage again. But the problem is with this, some patients find it quite uncomfortable to do the bandage. I mean, the bandage itself is not comfortable and in, especially in our weather, it's very hot and essentially it's not convenient to patients. And most of the time, they're not really compliant. So that's why we have some issue with this, actually, with the bandage. And patient actually only few cycles, then they just decide not to do it anymore. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Daphne, for sharing okay. with us. Time to share okay. with us this afternoon for educating us uh, regarding lymphedema surgery management. Um, is hey, uh, there any? Can I have one question for Dr. Daphne? Yes, yeah. please. Yeah. Hi. Um, this is. Oh, hi. Thank you for your talk, and it's quite an eye opener because it's a very new thing for. One question I is not related to surgery, but question okay. related to massage versus for breast cancer patient fibers. I don't know what uh, what is your opinion about uh, cancer patients um, who have been through surgery, whether it uh, lumpectomy or mastectomy, to uh, receive massage from <laughs> any concern or anything to watch out for. Uh, yeah, sorry, post mastectomy, uh, receive massage. Let's say after some period of uh, recuperation, they are they feel okay. having massage, you know, like any a oh, lot of people. Breast, yeah, other than physiotherapies, they go for massage from time to time. 
Any concern or anything? Ah. Take note, yeah. Is it massage over the lymph, the upper limb, or is it over the breast? Yeah, lymphatic massage kind of. Or lymphatic. Okay, the lymphatic massage for some people they know where to massage because lymphatic actually the channel the lymphatic vessel follow blood vessel. Okay, mm -hmm. if I'm not sure about the physiotherapy outside there, if they claim they have done training before because they have to follow the lymphatic channel. That there's no contraindication. If they he if that person claim they have uh, training for lymphatic massage before, so I, I cannot decide. I cannot tell that they know how to do it because we have to assess. If it's such improvement, actually there's no harm going to do it because if there's improvement because lymphatic massage actually you need to be done quite frequent. It's not like one time it's going to be improved. You have to do it quite frequent because if it's there's a blockage or there's a slow. Because usually what happens in lymphedema, not only blockage, they also there's a stasis, meaning that the flow, your lymphatic flow is slow, slower compared with normal. So lymphatic massage actually can improve that, like further improve the flow. But problem is you cannot do it only one time. You have to do it quite frequent. But if, if that physiotherapy like claim that, the outside one, I'm not saying the SGH one, like if they claim they have training before and it's, there's such improvement actually I, there's no I don't think there's contraindication to go for the massage because actually it can relieve the symptom as well and the swelling yeah I think we have no problem but to I think they need to go under undergo training for this I'm not sure the concern is a lot of people may be going for massage in in like massage center rather than a physiotherapist you know mm -hmm. so yeah yeah, that, that's a major concern. For physiotherapy to do the job, I don't think we have much concern. But for a person who always do all kinds of massage, they claim that they know how to do lymphatic massage. Uh, should we just uh, avoid? <laughs> or how do we advise when patients ask them? You know? Because I, actually, I noticed that some massage treatment, they offer lymphatic massage. Mm. And, and honestly, my friend also been going to this lymphatic massage and they said it's quite painful because they press along the channel. So I'm not sure whether they're doing a proper thing because I've never experienced before. Mm. But it's for normal patients, like for normal people like us, she is not going to like uh, really, really uh, show something. But for a lymphedema patient, if they're going for a massage, if there's a relief or symptom, I think why not? But promise the people outside there, they claim they have lymphatic channel, uh, lymphatic training. It, it, the thing is, I'm worried they just massage different area. It's not that really lymphatic massage. So it's difficult to say because now I think BT center everywhere, they have lymphatic massage. So oh, it's yeah. difficult to prevent these people to claim that they have lymphatic. Probably they just normal massage, but they claim a lymphatic massage. But huh. All right, if there's any more, we'd like to thank Dr. Daphne for spending her time with us on this Saturday afternoon. Thank you for enlightening us, Dr. Daphne. We hope that you will come back and share with us on other topics as well, not just uh, okay. lymphedema management. Okay. Sure, sure. Thank Any, you so much. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, everyone. Okay. okay. All, All right. right.